let's move on. Uh, and in fact, it's me. We've we've always been at war with East Constia. So I don't even need to change the screen here because I've got it coming up on the next slide. So here we go. If you have been to into the, the Gather Town venue, then you've probably come across the, the West Constia and East Constia there. These are plays on the, uh, the East Const uh, thing that we've, we've had going on for a few years now. And uh, well, it's, it was around before that, but um, a few years ago, uh, John Cow did a, well, a blog post and then a, a lightning talk on, on East Const. Uh, we'll see a slide from that in just a moment. And I actually followed up with my own lightning talk, which this is a version of, uh, which is a bit of a riff off that and sort of taking it a little bit further because I was thinking about what things could go even further east or further to the right in C++ code declarations. And what I came up with was function declarations because as of C++, 7, uh, C++ 11, sorry, we can use trading return types. And in fact, uh, the, uh, the, the actual return type itself goes even further to the east than const. So it's even further east than east const. And we do also have to put the, the auto keyword at the front, of course, and the, the arrow in there. But otherwise, this is identical, as far as the compiler is concerned, to the more traditional form. So why would you, why would you ever actually use this? Well, there are cases where you have to use it, of course. And usually the canonical example is something like this, where the return type actually depends on something that's named in the argument list, uh, which isn't in scope before we get to the argument list. So it has to come after the, the argument list, and thus the trading return type was born. Uh, but it's also consistent with another language feature, lambdas, where if you do explicitly mention the return type, but we often don't because it is implicitly auto, but if we do, then we have to put it as a trailing return type after the arrow, after any argument list. So it's Nice consistency uh, there as well. But apart from those cases where you really have to use it, th there's no real reason why you would do this, is there? Well, some people don't think so. Uh, Arno Mertz was one of them in his uh, Simplify C++ blog. He said a few years ago, training return types are an oddity in C++. We should use them only when necessary. And that sounds like quite sensible advice, really. But, and there's always a but, some of us, not just me, have experimented with the idea of using training return types everywhere that we can. Sort of uh, almost always training return types, if you like. And, and we like it. But why would we do this? Well, it's worth noting that actually even Arno Mertz, when he, uh, he saw the first version I did of this talk a few years ago, um, he's actually reconsidered his position. He admitted it had fallen into the trap of arguing along the lines of, but we've always done it like that. And that's the, uh, the, the foolish consistency that, uh, that John Calm talks about. Talking of consistency, though, I've already mentioned consistency with, with Lambda functions. So not all consistency is bad. Now, what about consistency with other languages? What do they do? Well, there's a few examples in our favor. Uh, Swift was the first one that comes to mind for me. Uh, apart from funk instead of auto, it looks almost identical to, to what we do in C++ in terms of the return types. Um, Haskell, again, is very similar. Training return types there as well. Uh, there's many other examples like uh, Rust and, and so on. But actually, even if you get down to pure maths, the, the function uh, syntax for, sorry, the syntax for functions has something like a trailing return type. In fact, this is really where it all comes from, to where these other languages actually get it from. So you could argue this is actually the more natural syntax that we should be consistent with. An interesting argument maybe not necessarily a particularly motivating argument. For me, the more motivating uh, argument was readability, because it turns out that if you put the same four characters at the front of all of your functions, all the names line up, and that does actually make them genuinely more readable. When you look down a whole list of function names, having them all perfectly left aligned makes it much easier to find what you want, and the, the function name is usually what you're looking for. So that, that's definitely why I prefer it. And you can see there, you know, even with void, it's the same number of characters as well. And yeah, even if you have other modifiers, uh, you know, like virtual um, and some others that we'll talk about later, um, you can generally group them so it's not really a big issue either. So yeah, for me, that's that's why it's a real winner. But those other factors count as well. So I've mentioned this post by John Cowb a few times now. 
a foolish consistency, hobgoblin of little minds. And yeah, we, we talked about consistency in a few different ways, but this is particularly consistency with what we've done before. John's argument was that while that does sound reasonable on the surface, it can really hold us back from moving forwards, especially when progress is incremental. It may not seem like a big thing. So if it's not big enough for us to make a change, we will never improve, is his argument. And yeah, I've got some sympathy for that. Of course, he was talking about East Const versus West Const. I'm applying it here to trading return types as well. So which argument swings you? Is it the uh, consistency with other language features where we have to do it that way? Or is it our consistency with other languages? And actually talking about that, you remember that Swift example? Um, you used the func keyword instead of auto, same number of characters. It's just a shame that you know, the func keyword would be more expressive if we could use that. But again, of course, you can't do that in C++. Or can we? C++ is, of course, a flexible language. We could use the preprocessor to uh, help us out here. Uh, in fact, why stop there? Let's go all the way. In fact, if we do this, we can write our code very much like Swift. And you can see there, I've actually baked in these cons as well into the let keyword. So we can get over our Swift NV and our Rust NV. Actually, I'm not too serious about this point with the preprocessor, but training return types in general, I do think it is actually quantifiably better. I even wrote a blog post about it a few years ago now, and I gave them a name, East End Functions, because they come at the end of the function, on the East End, in fact. 